Hello and welcome to another video of Coffee and Stocks. In today's video, I want to talk about the incredible jump that Hylion or Tortoise Acquisition had today and what might have caused this upward trend. I also want to mention that we started the giveaway of an e-gift card for one of my subscribers this week, so stay tuned for more information on that. But before we get started, how about we get some coffee? All right, let, let's just get one thing straight and that I am not a financial advisor, so don't take my words as advice. Please don't forget to drop a like on this video as well as a subscribe. It really does go a long way in supporting the channel. Don't forget to comment on each one of these videos that I post on, um, on a daily because that gives you an opportunity to win a $10 e gift card. Skipping ahead, today has been super crazy let's just say that tortoise acquisition you know had an amazing day today and those investors who are invested in tortoise acquisitions had a great return today but let's see why right let's first start with off uh with the market price this morning they actually started off with a two percent increase uh before market opened at around 40 at the 40 dollar mark which to some people you know that was a bit high since we've seen it at a low of 35 to 38 dollars in the past few weeks now i don't know exactly when any news came out but the stock price rose and fell for a little bit but holy crap when we get to around this time it was running for 41 dollars and 26 cents and then it just completely shot up to the upside giving everyone the FOMO runs. Yes, I mean, everyone got the fear of missing out with the combination of the CEO of Hylion being interviewed. The price then shot up to the $48 mark. That's freaking crazy. 18% increase. Maybe a lot of investors, you know, might think that 18% isn't much of an increase, but for small investors, that's just incredible. Now, Tortoise Acquisition finished today at around a $51 mark, and that's a 27% increase today alone. Um, that's not including, obviously, the increases that Tortoise Acquisition has had in the past few weeks, coming out from the lows of 20s to an incredible 144% increase to $51. I do want to say that SHLL did have a high point of $53.12 at one point today. I am just super excited about this because we have now surpassed the $50 mark, which we have said a while back. Now we do have the um, CEO of Hylion being interviewed by um, Yahoo Finance. And I do wanna you know, make sure that everyone sees this. Um, and he was you know, responding with some pretty interesting comments as well as uh, responding to a tweet from the founder of Nikola. Let's go ahead and take a look. As we've been highlighting, there's been a lot of excitement around the electric vehicle space. Of course, Tesla garners a lot of that attention, shares up nearly 600% since the March lows, but it's not just the Elon Musk led company that's seeing a surge even Chinese competitor Neo has seen investors flood into eat up shares. Neo is up about 700% since its own March lows. And more recently, a lot of buzz has been made by Nikola as that EV newcomer went public via a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC earlier in the year. And now we have another one coming down the chute. Austin based EV company uh, Hylion announced it will be going public in a reverse merger plan later this year with Tortoise Acquisition Company to trade on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, shares in Tortoise have surged nearly 300% since the deal was announced earlier in June. And unlike Tesla, uh, which plans to sell fully electric semi-trucks, Hylion is looking to retrofit existing trucks with its e-axle hybrid bolt-on drivetrain. For more on that and what the company has planned, we're joined by the founder and CEO of Hylion, Thomas Healy, that joins us now. Uh, and Thomas, I mean, uh, talk to me about why you think that is the best strategy. I know you might have plans uh, down the road for building your own semi trucks, but that seems to be the differentiating factor here. So what makes you want to go that way? So we're a powertrain company, right? So what we're doing is actually focusing on the drivetrain of the vehicle as opposed to reinventing the entire vehicle from the ground up. Now, the benefit of this is that uh, it's a lot quicker of an 
of a development, right? If you're designing the whole vehicle, you need to worry about the headlights, the steering wheel, the seats, all the above. Versus for us, we're able to just focus on the powertrain, very, very similar to what Cummins does for the trucking industry. But then that allows us to put our powertrain in all of the existing OEMs chassis like Freightliner and Volvo and Peterbilt, right? So we're able to work with those existing OEMs and enable them to have our electric powertrain in their vehicles. Yeah, and you got that investment from automotive parts giant Dana Inc. in terms of, I guess, helping market that that technology to its slate of customers in some of those OEMs you're talking about. Um, but you also, I, I guess, talk to me about the timeline too to get this out, because that's been one of the knock on some of your competitors is that the technology just takes a while to develop and actually get to market. But what are you seeing in terms of uh, the orders that you already have uh, from customers lining up? So we've actually already started shipping some product into fleets today. Uh, so we actually have two products we're bringing to market. The first that you mentioned before, the hybrid electric solution, which is a bolt-on. We replace the rear axle of the truck with an e-axle, and you effectively make the truck like a Toyota Prius. Uh, we also have the Hypertruck ERX, which is a fully electric drive vehicle. And on that vehicle, we actually use an onboard natural gas generator that can kick on and charge the batteries up as you're driving. So you don't have to plug it into the grid in order to recharge the batteries. So the hybrid system, already shipping that to fleets today in low volumes, and we'll be ramping up production next year and into 2022. Uh, and then with the hyper truck, we'll start deliveries in 21 uh, and then going into volume production in 22. In terms of uh, some of your competitors uh, commenting on that strategy, it was interesting to see uh, Nicola CEO Trevor Milton uh, commenting on Twitter about it. He said a few had asked him about your company and that he didn't believe that anything with emissions will survive, regardless if it's carbon neutral. I mean, what's your take on either his comments here and why it might be the best strategy? And also, I guess, just outside of him and, and what he has to say. I mean, he's clearly benefited from a lot of the attention the EV space has gotten right now. So, I mean, how does that all fit into why now is the right time to try the strategy you're going with and, and why you think he's wrong? So all the efforts towards electrification are, are great, right? I mean, the ultimate goal by all these companies like Nikola, Tesla, ourselves, is that we're trying to you know, improve the operations of the fleet and reduce emissions. And you know, the, all three of us just are just taking a different approach to the same problem. So you know, what Tesla is do, doing is using an electric truck that charges off the grid. Nikola is doing an electric truck that uses hydrogen fuel cell to recharge. And what we're doing is an electric truck that uses natural gas and specifically renewable natural gas to recharge. And so, you know, when you look at those different solutions, what we really see as a game changer with ours is that with using renewable natural gas, you can actually have a net carbon negative emissions profile off of the vehicle. So when you look from like a well to wheel approach, so, you know, if you think about charging a, a car off the grid, well, some of that electricity may come from wind and solar, but a lot of it's going to come from other sources like yeah. coal or natural gas or, you know, it depends on what area you're in versus, you know, so there are there is emissions that comes from that type of recharging of a, of a vehicle. With our solution using RNG, renewable natural gas, it's actually a net carbon negative fuel. So in a, in a strange way, it's actually cleaner for the environment to drive our vehicles than to not drive them. Key information that he said in this video is that they actually started to ship products out today. And that is an interesting comment. And I wish he would have said how many they sent out or where they sent out. But I'm glad that they are actually sending out and shipping out products, even with the pandemic happening right now. Now, news about the shipping is probably what got people super hyped today. Uh, you know, and totally started buying more shares of Tortoise Acquisition. And just a little of my speculation is that there might, you know, also be some insider trading happening and maybe some large firms who are buying large sums of, uh, of shares right now, right before the merger is, you know, it's also an idea of why this stock jumps so high today. Next thing I, I do want to mention on this interview is that the shade that Nicholas founder was indirectly throwing a highly on you know, that he thinks that they won't survive, as you can see here in this tweet. But I'm glad that Thomas Healy responded in a civil way. And given that they are all working towards solving the same problem, but going at it at their own way and different directions with Tesla going it and doing it, you know, with charging an electric truck off the grid, Nikola, who is charging an electric truck with hydrogen fuel cell and Hylion is doing it using renewable natural gas 
or natural resources, creating net carbon negative, you know, which according to him, it's a cleaner, you know, it's cleaner to drive highly on vehicles than not to drive highly on vehicles. Bam! Backhand, backhand slap. That's just a nice, you know, nice little slogan that you could use there. Um, and to finish up, um, at the look at the one month chart that they provided with Nikola being up 36% in a month, Tesla being up 68%, which is double than that of Nikola. And then you have an incredible 108% from Hylian. That's just absolutely insane. Anyways, that was the end of uh, today's video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hylian just exploding after exploding after exploding towards the upside um you know showing everyone who is really moving super fast right now current price you know 51 dollars 52 dollars um you can still get into it because the merger still hasn't happened and i do believe and i do strongly believe that the 60 dollar mark isn't um a target anymore it might be like a 70 or 80 dollar mark that's the absolute target right now i mean nicola was going for a, for 80 dollars at one point i'm pretty sure hylian could totally beat that anyways do comment below um what you guys think about this don't forget that it when you do comment on each one of the videos you have an opportunity to win a 10 dollar e gift card for amazon because you are my subscriber until next time on coffee and stocks